I'm gonna show you a very special finger exercise that's gonna help you get faster fingers in one week and you don't even need a guitar pick. A big question I get asked about students all the time is, Lauren, how do I get my fingers faster for playing scales or chord changes? And it all comes down to the same mechanics. Now, I see lots of teachers out there teaching spider exercises, and I teach spider exercises as well, but there is a special exercise that really focuses on the tendons in your hand. Now, why is this so important? I want you to put your hand up in front of your face, okay? And I want you to bend your pinky finger, okay? Just like this, okay? look what happens to your third finger, all right? When you bend your pinky, even your second finger moves just a little bit. You cannot move your pinky and you cannot move your third finger without other fingers going with it. So I have a great exercise here that mimics chord changes, but it's also gonna help you with playing scales and other stuff as, as well too but it's gonna help us get real independence on our fingers. So speed comes down to two things when playing guitar. It comes down to muscle memory, okay? Can you actually make these chords changes or can you play these scales without necessarily needing to look at the guitar? Because as soon as you start thinking about things, it starts slowing down that time factor. So if you can start doing things off muscle memory, that helps a lot too, but also is relaxation, okay? I used to be a boxer, I used to do amateur boxing, and I always tell people, if you get really tense and you try to force a punch out there, when you have so much tension, there's only so fast you can go, it's gonna be slow. But if you relax your arm, relax your body, boom, and you just throw a punch out there, you can do it much quicker when you're relaxed. So speed actually comes for relaxation, and that's what this exercise is gonna focus on. Now this is one of a few exercises that I teach in my seven level guitar system to develop finger dexterity. And what we're gonna do in this, we're gonna go through this step by step and I'm gonna give you some tips. So please stick through the whole thing so that you get the tips on this exercise. We are gonna start on the third string, the G string, and we're gonna be at frets five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, I have all of my fingers now. Now for some people, this to keep all these fingers down might be too much of a stretch. Now you might have to go up to frets seven, eight, nine, and 10, okay? Because these frets are a little bit shorter and it doesn't matter. It's not really the distance, the stretch right now we're working on, it's more the tendon. So if this is more comfortable for you, that's totally fine as well. I'm gonna go back to five, six, and seven, and eight because that's where I'm used to doing it. And what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna do kind of like finger push-ups, one finger at a time individually, and we're gonna start with the first finger. And the goal is to try and keep all of these fingers down. Now, if you're just getting started and you have a lot of tension, you may have to use your other fingers to hold your other fingers in place. And what we're gonna do is take this first finger, go up to the top string and down to the bottom string. Okay, so top string, bottom string, top string, bottom string. And try not to do this with your wrist. Try not to use your wrist to assist you. I'm gonna pull up my sleeve so you guys can see my wrist here, okay? Try to keep your wrist neutral and it's just the finger that is moving. Top string, bottom string, top string, bottom string. And for a lot of people, the first finger is not gonna be a problem at all. You're gonna be able to do this. Now I recommend doing up and down about 20 times and moving on to the next finger. Okay, so now we're gonna do finger number two. All right, and finger number two also doesn't give people a lot of issues, but again, do it 20 times so you can work on the finger independence. The issue is now gonna come in where these next two fingers, and I showed you why. It's because the tendons in the hands, when you move these fingers, especially this third finger, this, look when you move this third finger. You've got the pinky moving and your middle finger moving. So that third finger is really connected, and when you guys go to do a C chord to a G chord change, look at that third finger, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mimic what we're doing in chord changes. That's what we're doing here. So now I'm gonna skip the third finger for now because it tends to be the worst and you'll see in a few seconds why. Um, the other problem finger is the pinky. Sometimes people, they cannot reach the strings. If you cannot reach the top string with your pinky yet, don't worry. If you can get to the fifth string, that's fine too. But try your best to get it to go up and down as fast as possible on those strings. Now. When you're doing this exercise, do not forget to breathe, okay? If you are not breathing, you are not getting oxygen to your muscles, you are adding in tension, okay? So just relax, remember to breathe. Here's the problem finger. Finger number three, 
Okay, almost everyone has a problem. I learned this exercise after I've been playing guitar for 10 years and I was still, I, I could barely move the third finger. Now, when you go up to the top string, it's probably easy. The hard part's gonna come right here, lowering it down to the first string. When I first started, I couldn't do this. So I'm gonna give you guys a little tip. In the beginning, you might need to use your other finger to assist you on getting this finger to go up and down, okay? But the important part to remember here is to relax, breathe, do not, do not force the finger down. Do not, oh, don't muscle it down. That's tension, we wanna relax. Breathe, breathe out, relax the finger, okay? We want to get this finger to move relaxed. Now you can see I can move this finger up and down pretty pretty easily. It works really well. I could not do that when I first learned this exercise. Now, now there is a huge disclaimer, a big warning I have to give you about this exercise. So please do not click, click away just yet because this is very, very important. So this is what we call a repetitive motion exercise. We're doing the same motion up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, if you overdo this, a little bit of this exercise goes a long way. If you overdo this, because of this motion you're doing, you could develop carpal tunnel if you overdo it. So here is my practice recommendation. A little goes a long way. If you are sitting down to practice, 20 up and downs per finger, okay? So 20 or an up and down, the up and down, that's one, two, three, four, okay? You're gonna do 20 per finger and then you're done, okay? That's it, all right? 20 ups and downs per finger, work on relaxing. If your third and fourth finger are really, really bad, what I would recommend doing is do these two fingers, do the whole set at the beginning of your practice, and then at the end of your practice, just focus on the third and fourth fingers, do 20 more reps with just those two, and I guarantee in the next one to two weeks, these core changes are gonna be moving much faster because instead of just sitting here and doing spider exercises, you're actually focusing on the things that are mimicking the chord changes and you're actually working on finger independence, which will help you relax and that will help you go faster. Now, if you found this video super helpful, I have lots of tips like this in my seven level guitar system. It is a beginner guitar system designed to help students just like you go from absolute beginner to playing the songs that you know and love. We work on chords, we work on strumming, we work on finger independence, and I've helped so many students just like you finally have more fun playing their guitar. Check out the link in the description below. I hope to see you guys in a lesson video real soon.